Hey, everybody. Welcome back to What's Next Beyond Service. Today is episode number 38, entitled Everyone Has Their Own Mountain to Climb. And today, the guest that we have, we have two guests. So you're getting two for the price of one here today. Usually, you know, we'll have single guests on. Um, and today we have a husband and wife team, uh, Caleb and Sarah Kolb. Uh, guys, welcome to the program. Thank you Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're, we're excited to have you guys on. Uh, just a little bit of background uh, on Kayla and, or Kayla, <laughs> on Caleb and Sarah. I get conflated the names there. Uh, yeah, we, we had talked, as I usually do. I, I have a call before actually interviewing people and had a fantastic call. Uh, and they actually gave me a tour of their facility, which we're going to do again today. So that's something a little different, right? So that'll be a you know change of pace to the standard interview. Uh, you're going to like what you see. Um, and, and just so there's no confusion on the, um, on the advertisement for the program, uh, I had said uh, Sarah Watkins. And well, but that's her maiden name. So it's Kolb. That's their married name. So that's that. Okay. So we're make sure everyone understands that up front. Uh, but uh, with Caleb, he is uh, the executive director of Adventures in Training. And then him and uh, Sarah have co founded Aurelius 520. Um, she's the CEO and he's the president of the organization. You know, they've got a team of great folks that work with them. And we're going to get into all of that, you know, what they do, why they do it here uh, in a moment. So let's do this. Let's start out with, I, I always like to hear, you know, when we talk to folks like you, what got you in to what you're doing now? And before we ask that question, though, uh, if, if either one of you can just give us a kind of a snapshot, the elevator pitch thing of, Aurelius 520, you know, what is it? What are you guys doing? And then we're going to hop right into the why. Yeah, definitely. And and first of all, thank you, Scott and Sarah, for having us on. Um, as I told Scott on Tuesday, uh, the Beyond Service platform uh, that you guys provide is, is an excellent resource for people like myself and Caleb to just learn and how and grow and how we can best serve the veteran and first responder community. So when Scott asked me to be on the show, I was surprised and, and honored too. So I appreciate you both for what you do here. Um, well, thank yeah, thank you for that. And we we love what you're doing, and we always want to be able to have a connection with people that are doing good stuff in this space of veterans and first responders and, and military. And I always say, you know, when you see it, you know, and and you know it, then you want to connect with those folks and try to expand opportunity for everybody uh, that that are that are again in this space. So yeah, we're so thankful that you're here. <laughs> well, thank you. And you know, Aurelius in a nutshell, um, I think most of us are aware of the psychological and physical obstacles that our veteran community and first responder community face um, now more than ever. And so what Aurelius does is we train those heroes to overcome those obstacles, whether it be PTS, anxiety, depression, a physical injury, or a, a chronic condition that you're working through, we'll train you to reach that new peak performance and to restore that quality of life. And the way that we do that is through a mind, body, soul program. So for the mind, uh, we'll get into the different offerings that we do for that. It includes counseling, um, mindfulness. Uh, the body is, is really ATP, which is the parent organization of Aurelius. That's our bread and butter. That's the functional mobility training that we do. And then uh, one of the things that we do also for the soul nurturing is adventures. And uh, Caleb and I are wilderness first responders. So we are going out on adventures anyway. Uh, and we are happy to make that a part of our program offering now too. Yeah, that that's the part that I just thought was so cool. I mean, you know, the the bread and butter piece of this is absolutely, it's an imperative, right? That's, you know, that needs to happen uh, and good folks like you are doing that. And then when you connect it to that adventure piece, being outside, when we talked about this on Tuesday, I, I think there's so much goodness to that connection to, to being back out in nature and experiencing it 
when you're not in the military, when you don't have other things that you're doing while you're out in the wilderness, you know, that distract from that connection uh, that you might not get if you're, you know, doing something uh, like, you know, hiking, you know, with 110 pounds on your back. And then as soon as you get to where you're going, you get right into the military objective and, you know, you, you miss some of that stuff. So that connection, I think, is so important. And that was one of the things that I was just excited to want to hear about. So, you know, I'll, I'll be quiet and <laughs> get back to you so you can tell us more. But um, so as, as I was saying uh, a minute ago, let, let's do this here. Uh, now that we have a baseline for what it is that you guys provide, you know, as a service to veterans. And oh, by the way, um, you guys do this at no cost for veterans. Is That's, that's correct, right? Yeah, 100% uh, free. And that's something we've committed to uh, even before Aurelius was developed, which was not too long ago, really. But uh, Caleb's father, John, actually started ATP. And uh, from day one, it was that he is never going to charge a veteran or first responder to train with us. Um, and also, really, a lot of the people he was training at that time and, and, and still that we train to this day, they had been told that they had nowhere else to go. Uh, their insurance funding had been cut. They were working through a condition that wouldn't necessarily um, allow them to progress physically in certain areas that uh, insurance companies look for in order to continue financially supporting their therapy. So he started training them um, without taking a dime. He knew wow. their, financial, their finances had been exhausted. So uh, that's really where ATP started. Well, and that's incredible. That's that's a good news story, um, and God God bless him for that. And obviously, you guys for continuing uh, down that road. That's that's significant. Uh, I I think obviously things cost money, right? There's investment in uh, program investment. There's investment in real property in terms of equipment that's used, uh, facilities, you know, overhead, paying people, and if you can pull it off and have the level of quality training and performance that you guys, you know, come up that, that you guys have. And then it's, uh, yeah. Hey, just real quick. Uh, if there are other folks that are listening today live, if you guys can mute your mics, that would be great. That way uh, we don't have any interference with uh, their, <laughs> our program here today. Okay. Anyhow, uh, getting back to what I was saying, uh, it's a success story, and when you understand the heart and the backstory of, you know, what you guys are doing, I think that makes it, you know, that much more of a win-win for folks. So, with that being said, uh, if we could, let's let's get into the why, because as I mentioned, I think the why is so important here, and you get that connection of, of the heart, uh, which I think really makes a, a big difference. Because there's a lot of folks out there uh, that are doing things. Uh, not everyone's doing the same thing, right? Uh, there are folks that differentiate their offerings, um, and that's good. But I love I love hearing the why uh, as to how you guys got into what you're doing. So if you can share that with us, I, I would be very happy. <laughs> yeah, um, Caleb, do you want to go first, or I can uh, go? You first? you go first. You're, you're <laughs> I think they're first. both very unique. Um, but also everybody's why is important. You know, that's what drives somebody. And uh, my why is, is incredibly important. And it really, uh, it started with a story of connection and honor to my late father, who was a Vietnam Marine Corps veteran. And my father passed away when I was seven years old. And I think when any child experiences trauma like that, uh, there are different phases of healing and coping. And aside from God and my incredible family, um, there's this one verse that's really kind of been woven throughout my life, um, and that's Romans 8, 28, and it is, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So growing up, you know, taking inventory, stepping back from my life, you know, just saying, okay, are things good? Um, am I living out my purpose? Yes, you know, the boxes would get checked. I've got an incredible family. My siblings, who are my best friends, were a really tight-knit team. Uh, my stepdad, James, he uh, is my best friend. And, and those are things that wouldn't have happened if, if my dad had not passed away. So, you know, fast forward a little bit, going to college, 
when it's time to pick my path here, I chose marketing uh, because my dad, after retiring from the Marines, was um, president of sales in his company, actually a, a paper company. So I don't know how well he'd be doing now in that, but, but, uh, <laughs> but I chose the marketing path um, and I was crushing it. I was doing awesome in my sales. I was selling train tracks actually all over the world. And it was so much fun. And, you know, stepping back again at that time in my life, thinking, you know, things are good. Uh, good has come from, from his life. Um, but it was a little bit later that I really started to kind of lean more into his military life and learn more about it too. Uh, he didn't talk about it a lot. So I had to ask questions. Uh, my brother had done a lot of research um, and I learned why well, I had known before, but it really started to hit me at this time that he was a prisoner of war in Vietnam and he suffered severe physical back pain, PTS. And when you're young, you don't realize what, what they're going through at that time. But um, as I'm coasting through life at this age, you know, late twenties, I started to notice others experiencing similar conditions that I saw in my dad when I was young. And so I thought, how can I bring good from his experience? You know, am I really honoring his service or am I living out the purpose that God has for me here? And so dipping into that a little bit more, um, I realized it was the connection to my dad that I was seeking. And I wanted to bring more good from his, his life and his experiences in the military. So in turn, I, I felt called to a higher purpose at that point. So I'm like, okay, I love my job. What, I can't leave my job. What can I do that can start to do more of that purpose that I feel like I'm being called to? So I really kind of took an inventory of my gifts and things that I enjoy doing. It was being outside, challenging my body physically, um, helping others to overcome challenges too. And so that's really how I, I found ATP was, was just Googling uh, local to Pittsburgh nonprofits that serve the military. And uh, so I met Caleb's dad first, John. Um, and at that time, as I mentioned earlier, they were serving people with chronic conditions and um, some of them were veterans. And so just volunteering on the business side of things with Caleb, um, is where I really knew that this is where I was supposed to go with my life. This was the next step. Um, and of course, leaving a, a full-time job that pays really well and you get to travel the world for free or on your business's dime, that was a really hard decision for me. So I said, okay, I'll give it another year, maybe two years. Um, but then I started to get restless being away from serving the veteran community um, and, and traveling. So I decided to leave my job and, and do ATP full-time. Um, and that's when I really knew, you know, before I left my job that this was my purpose. It was to restore the quality of life in veterans and first responders working through those psychological and physical conditions. So leaving my job um, and, and growing ATP on the business side of things, eventually Aurelius is born, which was not too long ago. Um, and thanks to our incredible team, many lives have been changed uh, through this program here. And it really all started with seeking that connection to my dad, honoring his life, and really bringing life from death. Well, you know, Sarah, as I, you shared a little more uh, on the interview than, you know, when we talked the other day, I, I just think that's amazing. And as I told you, I'm going to say the same thing I said in the call, you know, I know your dad is beyond proud of you. Uh, the person that you become, the the daughter that you are, and the fact that your impetus, you know, your your why is you're serving your dad. Uh, you know, you couldn't when you were younger, but now you're older and you see, you know, through different eyes and you have perspective and you've made a decision that is very significant. And it sounds like you're following your passion as well. And so you're able to do that. Uh, in a career, and that is that is a that's a, a big win because, a, as you know, you know, uh, passion and purpose, you know, those things are important in life. And if you can find it in your job, that is just incredible. Because I know a lot of folks that work jobs that they don't particularly like. Uh, the pay might be good, uh, you know, or location, you know, whatever the reason might be. They're just they're dealing with their jobs so that they can live life. And if you can do both, you know, if you can live life uh, and do good things in your work, 
then that just makes a lot of things, relationships, you know, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with friends, you know, family, it just makes life uh, maybe not easier, but it, it, it makes it better. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a tremendous story. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, you know, uh, can I, can I ask how, how old were you when your, when your dad passed away? I was only seven years old and my yeah. brother, um, he was five and my sister was only two and, uh, yeah. I'm the oldest of five now. So oh, like wow. said, we are a, a tight knit literal team, you know, we could, be yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I don't know what I would do without, uh, my siblings and, uh, or my stepdad. So that was, you know, looking, you know, checking in on life. I assume, you know, this is the good and, and it still yeah. is, don't get me wrong. Um, oh, absolutely. So to do more, um, you shouldn't ignore that call. And one of my favorite quotes really um, is grow your gifts. I don't even know who said it or where I got it, but I heard it on a <laughs> podcast, I'm sure. But it was grow <laughs> your gifts. And in every situation, as long as we're bringing our best to the table, how can I use my gifts to serve this situation here? or um, whether it be a really good situation or a, a really bad situation, when we're continually, continuously working to grow our gifts and, and be the best in every situation that we're presented with, um, I, a lot of good can come from that, no matter what community you're serving. Right. And, and what better community to serve uh, than folks that are in the military, folks who have served and, you know, are veterans, and then absolutely our first responders, law enforcement, you know, paramedics, firefighters, uh, those people are on the line every day. And, and you know, I have this conversation a lot, uh, in, not just on the podcast and talking to the folks that I bring in, but just, you know, sharing it with folks that, uh, you know, are, you know, civilians that have other jobs and other things happening in life. It's like, hey, you know, yeah, thank you for thanking me for my service. Uh, you know, that means a lot. You know, but when you consider what these guys and gals are doing as first responders, you know, when I'm not deployed, you know, I'm in an office or maybe I'm in the field, but nobody's shooting at me. You know, I'm not going to a place where I'm going to be in immediate danger at any time, at any given place. And, you know, when you're back home, they call it in garrison, you're not really you're not worried about stuff like that. You know, you've got other things to be concerned about, but you're personal safety isn't something that you have to consider every morning you wake up and leave hoping that you're going to come back home to your family and the strain and stress that that puts on these people and then you fast forward to where we are today where you know things have changed and there's uh, folks that are doing bad things uh, to police officers and yeah there's always a 10 percent in any organization where you have folks that uh, don't make the best decisions or right decisions and they do things they shouldn't but that in no way you know is the v vast majority of folks who serve as first responders and those folks they have a whole different road to travel uh, when it comes to what they deal with on a daily basis and then when also when you think about when they leave their service you know they don't have a va for medical issues they don't have a lot of the things that veterans are blessed to have because people care, you know, and so there's so much work I think that needs to be done on that side of the fence too, to help those people. And that's why folks like you are so important because you guys see that, you know, that's part of your, that's part of your purpose for, you know, what you're doing. And, and that's phenomenal. And, and your story uh, is, is incredible. And you're, yeah. Um, just real quick, my, my wife, uh, her dad was uh, in the Army. He was a lieutenant colonel. He, he died in Vietnam, and uh, she was five, and her younger sister was two, and she's from a family of eight. So the oldest was almost 17, and the youngest was two. Her mom never remarried. You know, God bless her soul. She was an incredible woman. You know, she, you know I, I loved when my mother-in-law would come see us, you know, and my daughters, because she was just a, a joy, you know, she, nothing was hard. She made everything easy. Uh, boy, you better not cross her because she'll let you know. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I, I'm getting a little teary eyed, but she was a phenomenal person, you know, heck of a mom. Uh, and she took care of her kids and, and they are tight. Like you're talking about your family is tight. Boy, they are like 
they are tight <laughs> and uh, you have to earn your way into the circle of trust like that movie i can't remember <laughs> so anyhow uh, yeah and i think when when a group of people experience loss um such as a team or siblings um or in the military and first responders that's very common unfortunately um that really you know a loss or a traumatic experience um, you know, me, myself, I haven't experienced um, loss in combat or traumatic experience in combat, but I have experienced death of a loved one or a teammate, that, so you call it. Um, right. And that can really bring people together um, at a different level. And what we've seen here is some people that have transitioned out of the military or um, are on leave from, from being a first responder at the time, um, are seeking that team again. And each person that's going through our program has experienced loss um, or a, a traumatic experience and that alone can bond them. And so we really try to, to, to force the community here. Uh, you'll see when we do the tour, there'll be a lot of group workouts going on. Um, oh, cool. And so it, it happened naturally. And when we realized that this was just as important as the psychology that they're getting, um, there's as much counseling happening during the workouts or during the adventures when we're being a community or a team here. Yeah, I bet. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing, Sarah, is that from your experience, right, you have perspective, you have sympathy, you have compassion, and you have empathy which are so important. You know, I, I think where you're coming from gives you a, a bit of a, of a leg up uh, and uh, being effective in what you guys are doing there. So that's, that's a phenomenal story. And I, I appreciate you, you know, being you know vulnerable as we say uh, and sharing uh, that part of your story, because that's significant and it means a lot. So, well, I thank you. Um, so Caleb, I don't know how you're going <laughs> to I feel bad for you now. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't talk to that. Um, but I mean, for well, me, I, I just, uh, I, I grew up with my, you know, my dad um, who had lost friends um, in Vietnam and, and had, you know, talked to me and my brothers about that and the importance of um, honoring them and honoring the military. Um, and, and I was not in, you know, I was not in the military. I went to the to school in Nebraska and, and, you know, I really respect the sacrifices that the military uh, men and women have made. And so, you know, I wanted to, to give back and this was, um, you know, how I thought that I could, could help give back and honor them. Um, you know, by not, not being in the military, this was, you know, the next thing that I could do. I thought that I could help. And so, um, and so we, we started ATP in 2015. And then, um, you know, once Sarah joined, we, Sarah's our logistics coordinator, you know, she does <laughs> not let things fall through the cracks. So we've really uh, grown a hey, lot. Hey, why, why you're saying that real quick, let me, let me show you their shirt that I got on. It's from a buddy of mine. I had to move the camera here so you can see it. Can you read what it says? Logistics, logistics wins wars. wars. Yes, it, it absolutely does. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, was, yeah. I told Caleb he doesn't know what falls through the cracks, so I'm safe. <laughs> hey, they, you know, they they say that you know professionals do logistics, and it's it's so important. But uh, anyhow, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's you know that's really you know what our mission was when we started is we wanted to to help those um, that were in need. That that initially we just started with physical um, physical wellness and you know, when any veteran, we've always, we've had the mission since 2015 that, that we will not charge them for their service. And so um, if their insurance is cut and they, you know, they need a place to go, that's why we started. Um, and then we've really, really just grown um, through different partnerships and, and new locations to, to what we offer now, um, you know, with the physical wellness, the um, adventure training, and then the partnerships for uh, the mental health as well, TMS and one-on-one and -on -one, uh, counseling. Yeah, that, that's such a blessing. And hey, this, um, in, in my mind, I'm trying to, you know, if, if you said this, I apologize. Uh, what branch of the service was your dad in? What? Uh... He was, my dad? Yeah. He was in the army. 
in the army. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm not going to have any army jokes, uh, cause that wouldn't be right at this point. <laughs> and I, and I'm terrible at those. Anyhow, I was, I think I shared with you guys or someone the other day, my, my brother-in-law, uh, he retired as Lieutenant Colonel in the army. And, you know, whenever we would meet up over the years, he would just dog me about all these military jokes. Cause the services always hit on each other. Right. And he would just fillet me cause I just can't remember jokes. Right. But but I love his jokes because he's he's good at telling jokes. So, but the, anyhow, <laughs> but you know, hey, what what I think is so cool about this <clears throat> is that well, there's a lot that's cool about this. But one thing that uh, I want to share is that you guys are both um, you, you're you're both your dad served, and you guys see how important that was. And I, you know, you guys haven't served in the military, but I think what you guys are doing is as important, if not maybe more important, because you guys are here for folks that are returning or for folks that are serving that need, you know, this. This is so important because this goes to your health. You know, it, you know, you talk mind, body, and soul. Those three things, you know, it's like a trinity, right? You can't, you have to have all three. You know, a, a, a table doesn't stand with two legs. You have to have three. And the wellness part is so important and this is something that's been overlooked for forever and thankfully there are people like you uh, that are doing this and that see the goodness and that have results to hold up to the world to say this is what good health looks like and you can achieve it you know there's no perfect anything but we have a path to get you on to to help get you straight uh and it's a good thing and i'm so happy that you guys are doing this because people deserve to have a better life and uh, i respect you guys so much for dedicating your lives to doing just that it, it tells me that you love your parents you're honoring your parents uh they must have been good folks because uh, they created folks like, uh, you know, the both of you. So th this is just incredible. Well, thank you. And one of the things um, that John, Caleb's father, went through, um, he was retiring from the NFL, actually. And um, his identity had become an NFL player, a coach, a player. And I think um, what we've seen is a lot of people who are transitioning out of the military or who are a first responder, police officer, firefighter, their identity can be in the job that they're doing because it's everything that they do. They're always on guard. Um, and when they're no longer doing that job or um, whether that be for a, a, a health reason or they've decided to retire, um, it's okay, where's my identity now? And a lot of um, what we've seen through what we do, you know, that wasn't the, the purpose of, of developing our program was to help people find identity, but it was to help them to find that new peak performance. So right. that, that doesn't mean, you know, I can do 10 more pull-ups than I did 10 years ago. That means here's, here's where I'm at right now. Here are my new um, demands of activity. Is it being able to walk with my grandchildren or uh, walking my daughter down the aisle, or it might be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. These are new uh, daily physical demands that I have. Um, in turn, a new identity that I'm kind of learning and growing through and, and trying to reach here. So part of forging that path to peak performance is really um, developing and, and seeing what that identity is. <laughs> Your stock just keeps going up <laughs> because <laughs> that is, you are so right with that. And and that's a, another theme here on the program and just, you know, and, and other folks that are doing similar things is that's like the one thing that a lot of people, you know, in the military and I know, you know, first responders too. And to your point with your uh, father-in-law, uh, your, what you do can become your, your identity. And then in one day it's gone. And a lot of folks aren't necessarily thinking about that. They're thinking about the immediacy of, you know, especially if they're not retiring, because this depends on age too and where you are, expectations with career. A lot of folks are thinking about, okay, I need to be employed. I've got a family. I've got bills to pay. I've got a mortgage, you know. So, of course, you're going to focus on the job, and then you're not thinking about your health, you know, necessarily, or you're not thinking about – 
you know, who am I now? Because, yeah, you're the same person, but you're not because you're no longer a Marine. Once mm-hmm. Marine, always Marine. Yeah, it sounds good. But the folks you work with, they've turned around and they've gone back to the objective and you're not there. And you're trying to figure out, well, what's this new thing all about? And if you haven't had uh, things that kind of kept you centered, if you were just so deep into being a Marine or a you know soldier or, or whatever, when you get out, it gets it can be lonely and it can sneak up on you uh, that that lack of purpose and identity. That's so important. And, you know, I think when you look at transition from these services, uh, that's an area that I think isn't getting enough show, you know, enough airtime in that process. So I'm so glad to hear you say that, that that made, that made my heart race. Uh, as soon as you said that, I'm like, okay, here's another good reason why folks need to uh, connect with you folks. So, all right. Well, um, that's, you know, both of you guys, your, your backstories are, are fantastic. And you know, again, thank you for what you guys are doing. Let, let's do this. Uh, uh, you want to talk a little bit more about uh, what, what you guys are doing specifically uh, any given day, or do you guys want to look to go on the tour now? I'll, I'll let you guys decide how you want to do that. Do you want to talk, or I can talk a little bit more, kind of a typical yeah, day, maybe? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so, it, well, before I say it, it's funny, when you were talking about, you know, how close the family is, Sarah, we actually, she's a gem, because uh, <laughs> my mother, my father, myself, and the dog are all in the same office every day. So Sarah's oh, wow. <laughs> works with my family every day. <laughs> so, uh, so we all work together. And, um, and so it's, it's awesome. We're, we're really blessed, but um, you know, <laughs> just continuing on with the program um, you know, when a, just kind of running through it. So when a, when a client, sure. um, either they reach out or they're referred to us. Um, and that's really how we get a lot of, a lot of our clients are referrals from other clients. Um, and, and we've really been growing quickly in, in the Pittsburgh area with the first responder, um, fire police, EMS, um, you know, with, with that group. And, um, and so when they, when they hear about us, the first thing I do is I, I either, I give them a call or I invite them in to, uh, to just sit and talk about the program. And so um, I think it's really important if I can get them in and they can see the other, the other clients, the men and women there that are, that are working out and the, the camaraderie and, and the laughs and the fun that everybody's having, um, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing is trying to, to get them, you know, to join the team, to be part of that, that team again, the camaraderie again. Um, right. And so, you know, the first, and, that, and I tried the first day is, is a paperwork day. And that's kind of, you know, I try and let them know that ahead of time. Um, and so, but we do a lot of, um, you know, a lot of baseline, um, baseline information, baseline tests for the physical and mental health. So we'll, we'll go through their baseline um, testing with our, we have two exercise physiologists on staff, uh, my dad, John and, and Nick, who actually, my dad was a, a professor at Youngstown State and uh, taught kinesiology and Nick uh, got like 104% or something in his class and was like (laughs) graduated magna cum laude or something and did an internship with us and just did amazing and we're like we have to hire him so we we got (laughs) Nick on board and and so the first thing when they when they work with the um, you know the physical wellness side is they'll do a we'll do a baseline test with that client just to see where they're at so we do um, body composition functional movement screen balance flexibility cardiorespiratory endurance Um, And and then we get a good uh, baseline measurement of where they're at. Um, We'll also have them set up with our uh, health coach. So we have um, Dr. Jennifer Hampton, um, who's been phenomenal helping us out with the nutrition side of things and the biomarker testing. So they can do the biomarker testing. She'll go over those results with them, give them a baseline of where they're at and set up um, times to meet, to discuss the, the meal plans and, um, you know, how to, how to live day to day outside of the office, you know, and, and decisions when it comes to the right choices and sleep and things like that. Um, we also have them do the, the medical, um, or excuse me, the, um, mental health side of things. So, um, we do a lot of baseline, um, testing for that as well. And then we'll connect them. I'll connect them with, um, we partner with a clinical psychologist. And so I'll bring the paperwork to him. Um, 
and he'll evaluate and say, yes, I think that this person would be good for um, one-on-one -on -one counseling or transcranial magnetic stimulation, which we have in the office as well. Um, and so he'll take it from that aspect and he'll reach out to them to set up a time to meet with them and start that aspect of it. Um, you know, typically, you know, if they're doing TMS, that could be five days a week for, um, you know, for 30 sessions and then that starts to taper off. Um, the one-on-one -on -one counseling is, is generally twice a week. And then that'll start to taper off as, as the clients, um, you know, as they, they feel, they feel better. And then physical wellness, we try to say at least three to five times a week, you know, as they can, as they can come in. And, and we, we measure this over an eight to 12 week span, depending on the client. So after that 12 weeks, um, we'll retest them um, with all the same tests that we did in the beginning. And, and that's really good for the client um, because they can see, you know, physically, I've, I've been improving, you know, uh, mentally, emotionally, I feel better. Like there's, there's tangible results here. Um, and that's been, I think that's been great for, for us to see, but also just for the clients to see as well. And then once they, they finish that eight to 12 weeks, they're welcome to come and train with us forever. I mean, there, there, there's no like, all right, you graduated, you know, it's, it's, they're part of the family, right? <laughs> part of the family, you're part of the community, keep, keep coming, right. join us. And then, you know, the last part of that is, is, uh, is Sarah and I, you know, our little wheelhouse is, uh, the adventure, the adventure side of things. And so, um, so we sit down and, and, and everybody's different, right? Not everybody's going on a nine mile hike or a single track mountain bike, you know, some, sometimes we might just walk outside around the clinic, you know, and, um, other days it's a rock climbing day. And, um, and then, you know, we also do larger, uh, domestic trips with Grand Canyon. We have a trip next week, rim to rim. So we're doing a 25 mile one day north nice. south yeah. on the Grand Canyon. Um, and then we're, we're doing uh, two, well, Sarah's doing two Kilimanjaro guides this summer. I'm doing one Kilimanjaro guide this summer. Um, wow. And then, um, and then at the end of the year, we're doing, or at the end of the summer, we're doing uh, Island Peak in Nepal. So there's a lot of really cool options um, that, clients kind of once they go through that period if they're interested in doing these um you know these adventures we have a like an adventure board so they can apply and and we try and sponsor one to two clients for every every trip that we do wow that's that's exciting that's right there's so much going on there you know you guys are very thorough in your approach uh and that's you know the proofs in the pudding there right uh, sounds like you guys have really thought through all these different avenues, you know, what comes up at what time, who needs to be part of this, you know, we need to assess that you know, so that you're, you know, leading these folks down the, the right path, uh, you know, on for all the right reasons. That's, that's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it it really is. Can, I don't, I don't know if we can take credit for that really. Yeah, it's our, our team. <laughs> so I would say our team, we try to surround ourselves with people much smarter than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think I think Ronald Reagan said that too, right? Yeah, <laughs> and that's, like that. that's the way to go. We've got an incredible team. Um, Nick and John, they are the exercise physiologists. Um, we have a lot of mentors that have helped us develop the business side of things. You know, how can we make this run smoothly um, and communicate this to donors? Uh, you know, where their dollar is going. Um, yeah. And also, uh, Susan and Steve are incredible. They've been in situations where they needed a program uh, like the one that we offer and they helped us to develop that and and uh, see see where the gaps were and how we can fill them and they've also um, they've been through a program similar Susan has been through ours um, and so they're the peer-to-peer -peer liaisons for anybody that comes through the door um, they're calling them because myself and Caleb you know as we talked before we're, we're children of veterans, but we've never been in those experiences. So we cannot relate on every level. And, and we understand that and we respect that. But I do want to be able to connect you with somebody that might be able to. So um, they're, they're a critical part of our team. Um, yeah. and, and like Caleb said, his, his whole family's here. So his mom <laughs> is here, uh, making sure that the schedule is running smoothly for everybody that's coming into train. Uh, and I guess we can't forget track the dog, uh, the morale. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, they, he was uh, on our call. We we did a 
you know, sometimes I do uh, phone calls for the pregame, you know, interviews, but we did a Zoom call and I got to see uh, Trek. So, yeah, that 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 that's kind of what was the icing on the cake for me. I'm like, OK, I know these guys are who they say they are as good folks because they've got a nice dog there. So. <laughs> he likes to uh, make his way around the office and just he'll get a pet from kind of each person you know he likes to get <laughs> make his rounds see everyone say hello and then that's awesome uh, then he'll go lay down yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, know. yeah I, I love the fact that you guys uh talked about the team you know because that's exactly. so important too that you guys yeah. get that yeah. and yeah. um you know there are so many times where folks are, are working hard and you know they may have the best intentions of wanting to uh, acknowledge folks and sometimes they get busy and don't and that that's just so nice that you guys acknowledged your team up front like that that says a lot uh, because those folks are performing and they're doing great stuff and sarah like you said you know having uh, the folks that have the experience of either being a veteran or a first responder you know that can you know, step in and have that uh, communication and have that you know understanding uh, where you guys you know just because you didn't have that background, you know, that's, just, that's smart that you guys are employing folks in that way too. So you guys really have this covered, you know, this is very tight. So that's, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Our team's awesome. We have a lot of fun too. Oh, I, 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 I just get that vibe from you guys. I mean, as soon as I talk to you guys, I kind of got that vibe. I'm like, man, there, there's a lot, you know, it's a very positive environment, uh, which is what you have to have for what you're doing. Right. Cause uh, it's not always easy. I would imagine. So well, uh, well, let's do this. Are, are you guys ready? I'm looking at my watch here. It's about a uh, quarter to the hour. So you, you guys want to take us on a quick tour? Um, we can be ready. I'll see if everyone else is. And I'm going to join from sure. my phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there might be a little, as we talked about, there could be a little bit of feedback. That's fine. You know, we'll just get through that, you know, because as soon as you go out to do the tour, it should back down. So, Saren, if you want to, you did a good job with your computer, too. But maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, you did great with that. Okay. You guys are going to like this tour. Uh, this is they've got a lot of neat equipment. Uh, it's a decent sized facility as well. And they have a lot of windows that folks can while they're working out, they can you know look at the trees and stuff. It's pretty cool. All right, here we go. All right, <laughs> let's do it. All right. Okay. Okay. So, Caleb, why don't you talk while I? Sure. Yeah. There. So what we're uh, what we're looking at right now, this is um, kind of our free weights area and our road wingspan rack. So, um, hey, hey, real thing... real quick, Caleb. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the way this yeah. is set up, if if you're talking, the camera is going to be on you, so folks won't be able to see. So it okay. might be best that that Sarah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no problem. You know, okay. Yes, okay. they just won't be able to see. Yeah. Uh, so this is the rogue wingspan area, and it's really um, you don't see a lot of the single plane movement um, lifting equipment here. It's because we like to do the complex movement that really help your brain to focus on really just what you're doing right now, and that's really mm -hmm. important in our workouts here. Um, so we've got the rings here. Um, I'll have Nick demonstrate a couple moves here, but and. Uh, so this here is also the recovery station. Um, so we're very thankful to Therabody who actually donated one of everything that they have uh, in their product line. And so uh, we've got the uh, compression boots here. Um, we have the Therabody guns in the office there. And uh, this is really important to us too. This was made um, by my cousin, actually. He's an army veteran. Uh, <laughs> He handmade this for us, um, but people people can enjoy their workout and then come here and uh, do some recovery. We also have uh, this is new, it's a, a, like a, a meditative virtual reality. So yeah. uh, hey, hey uh, Sarah, can you can you bring the camera down just a little bit oh, down? Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Cool. <laughs> I'm not All used right. to the the recorder here. <laughs> yeah, I, I I know. And hey, the other thing, uh, Caleb, uh, you know. Obviously, if you want to chime in, please do so. Sure. Yeah, I was just saying as far as the yeah, yeah. you know the camera thing. So cool. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Cool. Yeah, so I want to jump over here to the HydroWorks tank. So this is really um, 
a unique offering yeah. as far as you know a nonprofit goes because this uh, is what um, the professional sports teams uh, use. Um, the military uses these as well. And I've got it full of the water here. The lights are on. But what's really neat is there's a treadmill down here. I'm trying to see if the camera sees it, but that treadmill yeah. mm -hmm. can go up to 10 miles per hour. So that means we can train um, people who are, are more are looking for more of that intense physical training, maybe like the elite athlete athletic performance. Or we can also train those that haven't been able to run in years and they've they've kind of had that barrier because their body will no longer allow them to do that. But when we put them in here and we fill the water up, it, it decreases the weight that their joints are carrying. So someone that has right. years can can now run a mile, five miles. And we've now called it the happy tank because um, <laughs> of, the, of the freedom and the happiness that it brings to people that uh, haven't been able to do that in a long time. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's, that's great. I, you know, I, I, did, I didn't know that uh, those things exist, uh, you know, and that's, I, I can absolutely understand the benefits to that. That's fantastic. Um, and so when you walk into our office here, you'll see a rock wall. Um, and we had a good family friend and, and the Kolbs, we put this together. Uh, but each color here um, is a different route. And that really helps with sensory integration and, um, and really balance and focus too. So you're just focusing on trying to complete the red route one day or, you know, graduate to the yellow or blue. Um, but, and that's something also that is really important. Um, anybody that trains with us, their family is welcome to join us. You know, I know that transitioning veterans or, or first responders, being away from your children is not something that you're necessarily interested in. And uh, we encourage them to bring their family or their children in with them if it's if it supports the healing journey for them. Oh, that's great. So nice the logo on the wall it. there, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's the ATP logo. Yeah. Um, and then here we've got our Jacob's Ladder. Uh, this is what Caleb and I have been training on for Island Peak. Got a thousand foot wall to climb. Um, Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we also have the Rogue Echo Bike. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, the Rogue Echo Bike, and this is really where the cardio equipment is. Um, and these Nordic Track treadmills are really awesome. Um, they go up to 40 degrees. So the other cool thing about them is they have screens on them where you can choose your location as to where you're hiking or running at. Uh, so a lot of people choose Mount Kilimanjaro, actually. So if we could just put some rocks on the belt there, it would be like you're actually there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, funny. There's John. And then we have the rower there, too. And uh, Trek is, is behaving in his corner here. So that, oh. That's Trek's... Uh... <laughs> That's his position he's not right, happy with me right now. Yeah, he's chilling in the prone there, right? <laughs> but uh, it's a little quieter now. But this is the uh, TMS chair. So um, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, this is where somebody will come and get their treatment. It's typically 12 to 18 minutes long, um, very customized to each individual's needs. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with TMS, um, I'm certainly not equipped to talk scientifically on it, but I can talk in my terms, um, when somebody goes through a traumatic experience, uh, the, the pathways in the brain become damaged and the, the neurons that, that help somebody recover from depression or PTS, they're not able to forge through those pathways or, or travel through. And so the TMS um, sends magnetic pulses uh, with this here. You get, everybody gets their own brain map and they, they, see where the damage is and then those mm -hmm. magnetic pulses start to forge pathways for them they rebuild those pathways so that the neurons can travel through and uh we can begin to see healing from depression and pts and anxiety wow that, that's a wonderful explanation that makes complete sense <laughs> that's that's Thank fantastic you. yeah um and then here in in the uh same office as everything else we've got our our counseling room uh right back here um, I won't go in there, but it is in the same office. Um, and then we have our infrared sauna. So there's no one in here, but uh, the science behind the infrared sauna, that and the, uh, the 
meditative purposes too, um, has been really healing for a lot of people. Yeah, I bet. Nick? Absolutely. Nick is our, our trainer here. Hey there, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got our zine chair here. Um, so that's another really cool partnership uh, that we have. Um, zine is really a standing wheelchair. So somebody can use it in bar stool mode or, um, or you can sit in it too if needed um, and walk with it as, a, as if it's a walker too. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It looks high speed. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, did I miss anything? I think you did great. Okay. I'm going to go <laughs> sit back at the desk now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's it's nice to hear about, uh, you know, things that folks do, but when you can actually see the space they're talking about, then you see, you know, that they're, hey, there are people here that are, you know, taking advantage of uh, what's being offered. And, you know, that's, that kind of, that brings everything full circle. So that's, that's cool. I, and I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to, to see that, you know, folks uh, will, will get that, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very visual anyhow, you know, I, I like to, I like to read, but, you know, I, I like to also, you know, see things, uh, you know, instead of maybe always just like in lecture, you know, I always enjoyed uh, the more, you know, the visual presentation and stuff like that. So great, great job, by the way. <laughs> well, hopefully it wasn't too bumpy or nobody got no. sick. But, uh, no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was good, but uh, <laughs> no, that, that was awesome. So, okay. Well, it's, uh, boy, we're doing good on time. It's, uh, it's 11.54, so we're, you know, getting close to the hour mark. But uh, so, you know, thank you for the tour. Uh, again, you know, it's good, good to see people and things in, in action there. So now, as far as uh, what you guys are, are doing now, uh, and you're always looking, I'm sure, at the next thing, you know, whatever, whatever that next thing may be, uh, you know, when you have a, a business, because, uh, you know, you want to stay relevant, and sometimes, you know, you even want to expand, uh, you know, whatever that might be. Uh, can you guys share with us uh, what you have coming up, uh, you know, in the near term and even some further out if you've got something you want to share? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, one well, thing I go ahead, Sarah. Go ahead. Go ahead. One, one of the things I'm really excited about is um, when we started this, it was really just local clients that were commuting um, to our program. Um, and since then, we've Sarah and I live um we live in a cabin about two miles away from the office very close we actually we walk a few times a week to the office um and the owners of this location have um there's 11 cabins in this in this wooded property and um as they've come available we've been able to secure a second cabin um and now we're in the process of securing a third and so um clients that you know, or if somebody's interested that hears about this program and they live out of state um, or out of town that want to come and, and be part of the program, um, we'll, we'll be able to offer that. We'll be able to have a place for them to stay um, and, and then they can come to the program. So that's one of the things that, that we're really excited about. Uh, yeah, offering. that's a big deal. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> um, and then as far as, you know, our goals, our goal this year is to serve 100 um, veteran uh, veteran fire EMS police, um, new clients. So, um, we, we, we set a high goal and we, we believe we can reach it. And, um, you know, and we have, that's, that's a goal that we have the capacity to do. We have the capacity to serve a hundred, a hundred new clients. And so that's what we want to do. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a good number. Uh, that's a big number. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. And that's so cool. Like you said, having a, a place, and I would imagine if it's a cabin, it sounds like it's probably in a really nice place where you know, you're kind of back out, you know, in that uh, the nature environment. Uh, and that's that's a good place to be in, in the mind when you're when you're going through something like this. Absolutely. That's cool. Absolutely. And we've been really blessed as far, you know, the owners there, um, they have they, they believe in what we're doing. And there's a, they have a pool there. They have a volleyball, like a sand volleyball court. There's a field <laughs> um, and the owners have have said you know if somebody's going through the program they can bring their family they can bring their kids they can utilize those facilities while they're here um so it's really a cool relationship that we've been able to develop um you know it's it, the property is 23 acres so it's nice wooded. oh wow yeah 
the dog loves it too. He runs around there like you know. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. That's that's good to know. Yeah. Cool. So um now uh Sarah, you have anything you want to add or no, that was, you know, we're just really excited. Um, you know, we've got our our wonderful team built here. We have all the resources that we need in one training center, which was really important for us uh, to have everything in one all encompassing location here. And all right. just focusing on serving uh, the community that that is near and dear to us, the veteran and first responder community with excellence. And yeah. Caleb mentioned the 100 uh, new people this year. That's that's what we want to do, and we want to make sure we do that to the best of our ability. Um, and you know, we get asked a lot, you know, what's next as far as adventures and things like that. But um, for Caleb and I, I, I think I can speak for Caleb. Um, it's not about climbing the tallest mountain or um, hiking the longest hike or you know the the most extreme adventure. For us, it's you know what, how can we, we reach those people whose lives can be changed for the better by going on this adventure? So we're going to go to Kilimanjaro every year. We're going to go to the Grand Canyon every year because we've seen the transformation that takes place uh, when somebody day one commits to doing this adventure. Um, it could even be the, the walk in the woods, you know, a couple weeks from now, it might only be five miles, but um, that time that somebody willingly does this adventure and, and, and becomes vulnerable and trusts us to, to walk them through this process. Um, that's really, you know, I, I'm honored to be a part of that. And so we want to continue to provide those opportunities for people. Yeah, that that's beautiful. <laughs> you said that so well, and, you know, you, you talked about commitment and you also mentioned the word trust, you know, those two things are those two they go together <laughs> and i think when people see you guys uh, they'll quickly learn to trust uh because of again your your, your why you know why you're doing this uh, you guys are, are are proven uh you wouldn't have a facility there you wouldn't have all the equipment if you guys you know weren't uh making uh, good decisions and having good outcomes and the trust that's there helps folks to want to commit you know, because they see that they have good stewards that are going to help them along the way. And that makes the commitment piece maybe a little easier on their part because they can trust that you guys are going to help them. And that's, that's a phenomenal story. I'm just so excited that you guys had time uh, to come on the show today and, and talk about this. So, well, um, we're getting close to the end. In fact, it's, high noon here uh in southern california <laughs> so um uh, anything else you guys uh want to share uh, before we go to to q a are, are you guys good if there are folks that uh, are still here that uh, let me see yeah it looks like we got a couple of folks that are that are still with us here uh, are you guys good with uh, entertaining uh questions comments oh, sure. love, yeah cool all right so now this is my favorite part of the show when i get to bring uh sarah carell back in this is you know, relationship wise, you know, you say when you're married, your better half will, you know, I can say that she's, she's my better half for the program. So <laughs> it's always good to have Sarah uh, come in because uh, she always has words of wisdom and she's so affirming in everything she does. So Sarah, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you to lead us into the Q&A. Oh, thank you, Scott. I, I appreciate you so much because you are like everything <laughs> that I'm not. So this works out really well. Um <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'd love, you always bring the best people on. I have just loved this time. I was listening we're blessed with that. Time, Amen. Had to, what's that? <laughs> I said, we're blessed with that. Aren't we? That's, that's awesome. My Good gosh. folks. Yeah. I, I just want to first say that I was, I'm so encouraged just to even hear about your life, like just how you started off and how devastating that must've been to lose your father, Sarah. But just to see, like, it's amazing how it, it looks like your, your, your family just responded so beautifully. And like, even your stepdad is your best friend. And then you go and you have this passion to want to, you know, reconnect with your dad and the purpose of veterans. And then it leads you to Caleb and it's, it's like this <laughs> perfect, you know, I mean, life is never perfect, but it's a beautiful story. And it says so much about who you guys are. And just, just the, the health and the love that you're bringing to the veterans, like it really chokes me up. I mean, honestly, it just, it just, uh, 
seems so uh, healthy and so proactive. And so just you as people, um, I know are bringing so much to the people who protect us. So I just first off want to say thank you. Um, it's been wonderful to hear your story and see the tour. Um, I, I had two quick questions. Uh, so I heard at the beginning, it's a 12 week program. It's free for veterans. And so what does that look like as far as like maybe a veteran is in California and somehow he is chosen to be able to participate? Um, is there some online or is it all in person? What does that look like? Yeah, so, so go ahead, sir. So somebody, um, the number on the website, Aurelius520.org is my phone number. So you're not going to a call center or anything like that. So however somebody hears about us, they would either receive my phone number or Caleb's phone number. And we encourage that first uh, phone conversation so that we can get to know the person who is interested in the program, uh, kind of what they're working through. Um, and, and then we go from there. So um, everybody that trains in the Aurelius program has some sort of obstacle. As I mentioned, it would either be PTS, anxiety or depression um, or a physical condition. Um, or injury. So it could be lower back pain, um, you know, hip replacement, or, um, you know, a, a recent diagnosis of a, of a neurological disorder. Uh, but there's something keeping them from living that quality of life or seeking out that new peak performance. And so um, through our evaluation, the paperwork that we would provide for them, uh, we would see kind of what they're working through, and then we would direct them accordingly. And upfront, we're never going to turn anybody away. And so, you know, that's when Caleb kind of takes over the, well, he starts that process, but he walks them through that process. So he is your person that will be with you every step of the way to um, tell you about the program, ask questions, see if it's a good fit. And then he's going to introduce you to everybody on the team and he's, he's going to be with you every step of the way. So, so yeah. you, you actually take people like people, somebody from California would come to Pittsburgh. So if they, yeah, so that's, that's what we're excited about is, is having these cabins available. So right now we, we have one completely finished. Um, and the second one is almost, is almost done. I mean, by the end of the month, it should be, it should be ready to go. And then Sarah and I also live on the property. Um, so if they need anything, um, so when those are available, we have, we have availability. So, you know, anyone, can come if they're from California, if they can make it out to good old Western Pennsylvania, um, you know, the, the, the lodging is free and the program is, is free as well. Um, and it's, a, it's, it, it's only a couple miles from the office. Sarah, like I said, it's Sarah and I walk to work um, several days a week. So it's not, you know, it's a nice little back road. It's not heavily trafficked road. So, um, so yeah, to answer your question, if there's if there's space available, then then absolutely. Hey, if I could uh, real quick, that this absolutely reminded me of something that I did you know, when I was running a nonprofit a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we had a program where we recruited veterans, you know, transitioning folks into our program. We trained them over a month, and then we you know put them into the job market. We connected them with folks that wanted to hire them. So it was kind of a you know. Uh, a, a full process there and we went out to and, and maybe you guys have already considered this but we went out to hotels in the area and we explained what we were doing and they were just like oh that's great and they gifted us uh time you know at the hotel some some it was free others uh, were tremendously discounted so just you know if you guys and i'm sure you guys are probably all over that but you never know so i figured i'd throw it out <laughs> Scott, i got my pen right here i'm taking notes right now <laughs> well good yeah and, and it's amazing you know because you, you guys are such good storytellers um you know, in a good way not making up stories but you know, presenting yourselves you guys do it so well that i think folks would probably be excited to uh to do that and of course you know they get something out of it too because they get to talk about you know you know it's it's goodwill right they get to express their goodwill through doing things like that so yeah cool uh, to people they trust it's really nice i mean that's, yeah. that's a great opportunity for them yeah that's what you and, and that, that was a 
Oh, yeah, that, that was a great question, Sarah. Um, thanks for asking that. Uh, see what I mean by better half there, Seth? <laughs> oh. Well, and you already answered the second question I had, so I'm just done, but I just really enjoyed it. So um, so I, I, does anybody have any questions? If you want to raise your hand so I can see you or anybody in, have any comments or? Yeah, I have a couple of things that I'd like to share. Okay. Uh, my name is Paul Curtis. And I'm familiar with these folks, and they're familiar with me. And I want to start by thanking you folks for what you're doing. I mean, this is an incredible offering. And I, I can't begin to tell you how important it is for people who have lost their way. And so many have. And, you know, we've, we've all seen it from time to time. I am a Navy veteran, and Scott will just have to forgive me for that when he gets around to it, but <laughs> it's okay. My, I was raised in a Marine Corps family. But um, one of the things that came to mind was your, your magnetic um, resonance or treatment yeah, system that you have. Yeah, transcranial uh, magnetic stimulation. Okay. Does that function with somebody who has a, a pacemaker? That's a, that's a good question. I don't know if we've had a client with a pacemaker yet. Um, well, so. when they get old like me, they wind up with pacemakers. So that's why I asked the question, but because it's important. I can't have an MRI done right. because of the pacemaker. But I didn't know if this was the same kind of thing or not i was gonna say when we uh when we finish this i am happy to ask our our doctor and find out and then um scott i could reach out to scott and definitely um let you know hopefully, hopefully scott can put it in the show notes too so anyone else listening will know in the future <laughs> sure great point yeah sure. we can absolutely do that sure and the second question i have is have you developed a means for measuring your results? And, and I mean, in terms of your clients mm -hmm. and their activity. Yes. Yeah. So we, each um, component to our program um, has its own separate testing system. So um, for our physical testing, we use what's called the fit five. And so we, we do baseline testing, um, which is we do a body composition test, we do a functional movement screen, balance, flexibility, cardiorespiratory endurance, and we do that exact same test um, at the end of their program. Um, with the with our health coach, we do biomarker testing, so um, we do that at the beginning and then we do that at the end. Um, with the mental health side, um, there's several tests that 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 they give in the beginning. Um, PHQ-9, GAD-7, BDI-2, um, a sleep uh, PSI, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. Um, they do a drug and alcohol questionnaire, and then they do all of that at the end as well. Um, and then our team meets every week. So we meet once a week to discuss, to discuss clients. Um, and then at the end, we, we, we house all this data. So when um, we go through to our board meetings, we can... <laughs> we can go through all these, uh, you know, go through the, the client data. And the data is really important. We've learned, uh, you know, I'm a very data-driven person. We we also have the, the strap. Um, so I can wake up every morning and say, okay, how, how well did I recover? How ready am I to take on strain today? So I like to see those numbers and I like to challenge my body accordingly. Um, and a lot of the data that we use help people to, that are going through a program, you know, yeah, I'm feeling better, you know, life is, is getting better, um, but we can show them, yes, physiologically, you are getting better, and um, here's, here's how, and so it helps uh, mentally, and it also helps us when we need to validate what we're doing is working, so that means, you know, for grant purposes, and, and, uh, and donations, and, um, helping those that might be on the fence about joining our program, you know, these are the people that we've served and these are the changes we've seen. That's important for two reasons. 
number one, obviously for your clients, mm -hmm. because at the end of that 12 week period, if they can see a measurable distance difference, they're inclined to continue doing what you've taught them. And that's super value. And the second thing is with your, your board and your donors, mm -hmm. it's evidence of progress. It's evidence of uh, performance. And that's really hard to argue with. <laughs> and, and so, but, and then the last thing I would like to say, and it's just brief, uh, Sarah, I get the sense that perhaps your why is you're serving the Lord and your honor is that you're serving your dad. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and I've, I've been, uh, close with God my entire life. Um, I would say at times closer than others. Um, and then, you know, I think that's pretty normal for most people, but, um, you know, when life is going really good, you never really stop and think, okay, what more can I be doing? Um, but there was just this pause that I had, um, when life was going really good. Um, I was traveling all over the world. Um, and I love to travel. I was experiencing, um, different cultures and, and new areas. Sales uh, for my job was, was going really well. It was the top of sales. I was the youngest sales rep there too. So I had a pretty bright future. And then when you get hit with, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing, <laughs> you know, I don't know about anybody else, but I tried to fight that for a long time. Like, no, what are you talking about? How could this not be what I'm supposed to do? I'm very successful. Um, but you can't ignore God for too long. Um, because I started to grow a little bit restless and thought, okay, well, what is it then? Um, and how much time do I have to give towards volunteering, um, to a nonprofit and I need to, um, this connection that I'm seeking here, you know, it needs to be meaningful. And in no way did I think at that time that this is where life would lead me. And, um, it was really kind of crazy that it, kind of started with, I uh, wanted to run the Marine Corps Marathon. I thought, you know, that's how I'll honor my dad. <laughs> and um, I had no idea that this is what that would turn into. But um, how I knew I was on the right path with that was I didn't get into the Marine Corps Marathon. It's a lottery system and, and I wasn't drawn for it. But through volunteering in different organizations, I met somebody who he actually ended up being deployed and he said, you can have my spot. So I, I get to run the, the Marine Corps Marathon um, and thinking, okay, this is, this is what it was, God, thanks. Um, and during that training, I was introduced to another Vietnam veteran who was, is around the same uh, age that my dad would have been. And he and I grew really close and he got to tell me a lot of stories that I know were uncomfortable for him but he knew that I was seeking this connection and um, that I needed to hear them, the good and the bad. And so he kind of uh, was just there for me, uh, walking slash running through life because he was running the Marine Corps Marathon too. And um, I think the, the clarity or maybe the icing on the cake, some people call it, when I showed up on marathon day, uh, my mom and I had gone down to DC to run the marathon. There are thousands and thousands of people there. And never did I expect to see this man that had kind of trained with me and, and talked with me and walked with me. Um, so, you know, we texted before the race and we said, you know, good luck, you know, be praying for you. Hope it goes well, let's, let's connect back in Pittsburgh. And so 10 minutes after the race starts, uh, he's running right next to me. And it was just like this total God thing that, um, you know, once you start doing what you're called to do, um, things really just start to fall into place. And, you know, I started doing more of, of what I felt called to do. I, I met my husband, uh, my now husband. Um, we have a wonderful family and I get to do what I love and I get to do it with connection to my dad and honoring my dad too. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that a lot. And I appreciate what you're doing. And to Scott, you have hit another one out of the ballpark, sir. <laughs> I'm just a facilitator here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I tell you what, I'm, that was 
fighting back the tears a couple of times. And as I've gotten older, that happens more often, I guess. But uh, boy, you know, it's it, it's very interesting how, like you said, when you start to be more connected with God and you start to pay attention, the more you see things, the more things make sense, the more you realize that's what that is. That's what this means. And, you know, when you're busy, a lot of you, you ignore, you ignore a lot of things and you absolutely ignore God uh, and, you know, other people, uh, but being blessed to have the connection and to say yes, you know, to be a, a, a person who says yes and invites the goodness uh, in that relationship and all the things that come with, with that, that's, it's an absolute blessing. And, uh, that just, you know, again, uh, your, your storytelling there is, is phenomenal and, you know, talk about God works in mysterious ways. And then sometimes he's right in your face. <laughs> he's <there> here, <laughs> he's right here, you know, yes. and, uh, no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Uh, we're gonna go back. Uh, what what else you got? Any, anyone else? I know some folks said uh, we're on and then had to go. You know, again, I ex talked about this before that uh, it's yeah. uh, what I say, Sarah. I meant Sarah Carell. Sorry, I'm not used to having two Sarahs on. I just realized that you're probably like, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I need to think but, about that uh, one too. Let's see which one of us. Yeah, um, yeah everybody. Uh, the other two are gone, so I think it 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 was just Paul and I that were commenting. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Gosh, this was good. This was so yeah. good. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm so glad to meet you both. Yeah. Thank. You. Thanks for having us. If you uh, if you're ever around Pittsburgh, let us know. Oh. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And same thing. If you guys are ever here in, in Southern California, you know, same thing. A uh, lot, a lot of good folks out here. You know, uh, there, there really are. You know, we're we're blessed that Paul. Um, you know, it. My program is what's next beyond uh, service, and I'm working through the power of our story, which is what Sarah Carell has created here. And there are other groups of people that meet for different, you know, things that are uh, provided uh, uh, with her service. And, uh, you know, she brought me under the umbrella. I always like to say that, you know, cause it's true. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, can help keep you dry. And uh, she invited me in and uh, Paul is in, in our community and uh, he's always a, a blessing. He's a very wise very smart man. Um, and I'm not saying this to blow smoke. Uh, he's got an incredible story and uh, he, he, he loves to share his, his wisdom. And it, it comes from such a, a great place. And we're honored to have Paul uh, whenever he, you know, uh, comes into uh, any of these programs that uh, we're on air with. Uh, he's, he, he loves to share and it's uh, of great value. So thank you, Paul. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Well, guys, I, I think that's about it. We're about uh, an hour and 20 minutes into this. Um, I thank you guys so much for making time uh, to come on the program. Uh, I, I think this is going to resonate with a lot of people. Uh, and while I'm thinking about it, I, I know that I saw you guys had kind of connected in um, the DM on LinkedIn with uh, John McCaskill and uh Teresa Larson, you, you guys are going to hit it off. I mean, you probably might not even talk about anything important. You're just going to enjoy each other's company. <laughs> Thank <laughs> but, you so uh, much. Brad. We're we're so so excited about that. Yeah, oh, that's that's I, I I see some goodness there, and and Sarah Sarah oh, yeah. Carell absolutely she knows the same. So yes. uh, good. I, I hope you guys get a lot of a lot out of that because uh, I think there's a lot of really good stuff that can come from that. So absolutely. Oh, yeah, cool. I have one brief question that I forgot to ask, and that's for both Caleb and Sarah Watkins. Have yeah. you considered in the future creating a franchising opportunity for other people of like mind to be able to participate in other parts of the country? And I know the model is not going to be the same, and, and I understand that. That's just the reality yeah. of life. But that possibility is something to really consider because you're doing some very powerful things here. Well, and that's a, a great question. And Caleb and I, um, we believe there's no competition in the nonprofit world. You know, we have a goal to serve 100 uh, heroes this year. There are many more than 100 that need a program like this. And so when you talk about franchising or, you know, duplicating this in, in different areas, Yes, you know, that would that would be a big goal of ours um, and something that we hope to see come to fruition. But 
Um, we're also, you know, there are many organizations out there that we partner with um, where if somebody's not a, a, a good fit for our program right now because of time frame or or distance, um, I'm going to call the next organization and say this person might be a good fit for you or or that you can serve this person. Um, so to answer the question, yes, uh, but but more importantly is it's not about who can serve the most people. It's it's who can do it best um, for the right person at the right time. And so um, getting to know all the other organizations that that do similar work, um, Shields and Stripes is one of them. I know that you had Steve on here. Um, and there are other organizations that do great work too that, that are a good fit for, for others at the right time too. That's a great answer. <laughs> and and that's, so, that's so true. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, that unfortunately not everybody in the nonprofit community feels that way. Uh, but I think it's very important that, that we do because you know, we're all in this together, right? I, I like to say one team, one fight uh, in, in the Marine Corps, that means something. And, and I know it does with other folks too, uh, but that that's a very healthy uh, attitude. And, and, and you find those folks that do some, some not so much, you know, and that's fine. You, you just move on, you know, politely. And then you find the folks that, that do exactly what you're saying and you invite them in and then you, you know, you do good stuff together. So yeah, I mean, fantastic well, trying to, to better the lives of the veterans and first responders. So however yeah, we can yeah. do that best is what we're interested in. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, guys, it's been a fantastic uh, session here. Uh, and I, I wish we can go longer, uh, but I, I've actually got something. My, my daughter uh, is home from school. Uh, she's getting her master's and she's home. So we're, we're going to go off and awesome. do some stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm psyched. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, with that, I'm going to bid you guys a, a, a fond, uh, not a farewell, because I, I hope we you know stay connected here and and I'll certainly send folks your way as, as best I can. Uh, we'll get this out on um, on YouTube under the, the Power Story, and you know I'll I'll share things with you prior to doing that, so uh, you know it's no surprises there. So, God bless you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, much continued success, and God and you know have a have a great weekend one day early. <laughs> Thank you so much for having Thanks, us. Paul. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was okay. a pleasure to meet you, Paul and Sarah, and, and talk with you again, Scott. So thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you guys Take too. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.